Hello and welcome everybody to this very first live session with Vectornator and me, Sandra Staub. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer based in Zurich, Switzerland. And today we prepared something. I'm going to walk you through a sketch until a finished version in Vectornator. Um, I hope you're enjoying and please make sure to ask all your comments that you have about my work or Vectornator or anything in the comments and well, let's get started. As you can see, um, you can already, I already prepared a sketch here to speed things up basically. And what I usually start with when I have a sketch is I just place it in the background and I put my first layer there. Some of you might already know a little bit of my work. I like to name my, uh, my layers, so bear with me. I start with the skin usually. Um, I draw a lot of women, so um, the skin is just a very good place to start. It gives me like the basic structure and everything of my artwork. So I'll be picking the um, pen tool and I will just pick a nice color that I have in my color palette here. And I just start redrawing basically my sketch. I can observe live here. Whoops, I just saw that I also have the stroke on, which I don't want. That's fine. That's what we're here for. So, still on. That's great. I adjust my notes a little bit on the go. You will also witness that quite a lot probably today. Whoops. And you can see that my iPad is super sensitive, which is actually really great. But sometimes also a little bit of a challenge. I already messed up a little bit. Not to worry. I can always pick it up right where I started and just continue drawing. So you'll see that um, this is a little bit rough still. Gives me a little bit more of a freedom to adjust the notes on the go. Maybe not like that. Just getting in more of a shape of a finger here before I draw the entire hand. And move on to the arm. Here I actually want a little bit of an ear visible. And as you can see, now it's already starting to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to lower down my opacity here by double clicking on it. Just lowering it down to like 60%. And now I can see the sketch underneath it which makes redrawing it much, much easier. All right. Now I'm just deleting what I don't need. Trying to get in this shape of the hair. Perfect. All right. I um, previously prepared this sketch in a pixel-based 
illustration app because it's just like for me it's a little bit more it's kind of like good to know what I'm going to do you can always do that also of course by hand whatever you choose to do whatever your MO is everything work you can just scan it in later redraw it kind of like the way I do it and then you have everything already in vectors which is pretty great because then you can just scale it pretty much to any size you can create like big art prints from it yes okay sure i can talk a little bit about myself as well um as i mentioned i'm an illustrator and i'm a graphic designer based in zurich switzerland in case you missed that that's the biggest city in switzerland although it's not that big um and i've been working as a graphic designer previously for almost 10 years now and i also own an own design studio together with a, my business partner and friend and i also work as a freelance illustrator um, i've been working for many different clients from small um, uh, smaller businesses more local business as well as bigger companies which is pretty cool um, and uh, I changed to kind of like my career path to becoming an illustrator about two years ago when I lost my job, unfortunately, unfortunately due to COVID. And I just thought maybe this is, there's kind of like a reason behind that. And um, I just gave illustration a shot and I can say that it went pretty well. And I'm very happy about that. So for two years now, I've been fully self-employed as an illustrator and graphic designer. And um, yeah, I get to draw every day, pretty much. And I really love it. <clears throat> Other than that, you can probably see that in my illustrations a little bit. I love doing yoga, meditation. You can see that quite a lot in my work as well. It's quite inspired from things that are um, that I do beyond designing and graphic and illustration and all that stuff. I'm also a big beer nerd, so there's probably a chance that you can see one or two illustrations in my feed or in my portfolio that are beer inspired. So I'm starting a little bit to pick up here the nod. Yeah, now I got it. That's good. So let's make this foot look really nice. So here is actually in the sketch I was working with quite straight angles, which always helps me a lot to kind of like get the shapes right, especially like um, shapes of the body, like toes and everything. It's just like kind of easy if you try to break it down and work from there, making it a little bit more simpler to cross and then you can always fine-tune it a little bit more later which is kind of what I'm doing here great all right hey Anna says, hey, Sandra. Hey, Anna. <laughs> Hi, good to see you. <laughs> and um, Ralph Theodore asked, which iPad size do you use or prefer? Okay, so I'm a little bit of a technic um, or technology minimalist. I have had two iPads I recently upgraded about a year ago um, to an iPad third generation, I think it is. Well, it was the newest one at that time. Um, and it is a 11 inch iPad and previously I used a 10 inch iPad 
and I prefer it for the size because it's you know I mean they're the bigger iPads that are almost as big as my uh, MacBook and to be honest it's a little bit too big for me to carry around and this one is just the perfect size to just always put in my bag I always have my iPad with me and I can just always draw wherever I go um, yeah so this is the size that I would say I prefer because it's it's just kind of like in between it's not too small it's not too big and whatever you need to see you can always zoom in so I really appreciate kind of like the the new feature of the iPad that you can see more of the screen than before and that really works super well for me so hope I answered your questions and thank you for that aye, aye, aye. okay so I like to give a little bit of a bow into the foot kind of like an arch let's say as you can see here and maybe this time is a little bit too long we'll see after okay so you can probably see that i decided to go for a different kind of pants that i did in the sketch i'm gonna draw some leggings so that's what i'm gonna do next I just add a new layer i'm naming it and I will also switch up the color. To this lovely color that I call. You just see it in a second. Electric Coral, which I introduced a little bit later into my color palette. I started with just a couple of colors. And then I started to add colors that I thought or felt um, were lacking in the color palette. Okay, I hope you guys see enough of this because I know I'm turning it around sometimes so quite a lot. And I will also be turning down the opacity of this layer a little bit so I can see what I have in my sketch below. All right, Maddie Zoll, another illustrator. Great, ask, what is your favorite tool on Vectornator? So um, I kind of mix it up between the pen tool and the pencil tool. I really like the pencil tool for um, just kind of like freehand drawing when I have kind of like organic shapes. You will probably see that a little bit further down the road when I'm going to redraw these plant elements that I have here in my sketch. Um, for that, I really just like the flow of the pencil tool. And for things that are a little bit more precise where I don't need that many nods and I don't really need that much of an organic flow, I prefer the pen tool. And then I often use a lot of the uh, of just of the shape tools because I have like a lot of very geometric shapes um, that yeah that I make easiest with using the shape tools with using some of in combination with some of the boolean functions or something like that. Um, we'll also get to that in a minute when I will be drawing the moon that you see up here in the sketch. Okay, and Moritz, where do you get your inspiration from? So yeah, some of the inspiration comes from what I'm doing outside of illustration. For example, yoga, as you can see in the sketch, this is a yoga pose, it's called the downward dog. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more meditation themed. I get a lot of inspiration as well from themes that are related to being a woman or womanhood. Sometimes it's like current issues, um, a little bit political. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, life as a woman. I draw a lot of women or also hands because I just think like the, the body, there's kind of like a certain fascination that I have with the body that I just really like to draw it over and over again. But it just happens to be a lot um, 
to be women. And um, I also really like to the way that the freedom, uh, the, the freedom it gives me to kind of like express and play around, like with the hair and the clothing and everything. And um, yeah, not that there is not so not such a thing in drawing men, but um, I just connect or relate a little bit more to it, being a woman myself. If uh, if I draw women. I also um, get a lot of inspiration from nature, uh, going outside, yeah, um, plants. I own a lot of plants and I love to draw plants always in my illustrations. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this shape of the pants. I'm just going to adjust this knot here a little bit so this curve covers the skin. I hope you're seeing enough. And I will add the top. I will draw the top actually in a different color just so you can see it a little bit better. And then I will change the color up to white. So the inspiration actually for this illustration, um, let me see if I can recall that. Um, I, I did the sketch for a challenge on Instagram, which is called the Powerful Women Week. That was a year ago. I also participated in the challenge on Instagram this year. Um, and I think it was something about being your power, being your flow. And I just thought that this pose was, um, I just, when I, when I do this pose in yoga, I feel, I feel kind of like very uh, grounded and also pretty good about myself for some reason, probably because this is one of the yoga pose that I can actually do. <laughs> um, yeah, it gives me a really, really good feeling. And um, it just felt right to me to, to try to draw this one and turn it into an illustration. <clears throat> okay, and yes, so Emma is asking, how did you develop your own style? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I get that question quite, quite a lot. Um, and there is kind of like a two-folded answer to this, or let's say there's a many-folded answer to this. Um, I, I kind of like developed my style in a very quick, like over a very short period of time, over like a couple of weeks or so, once I kind of like really figured out um, what were kind of like the ingredients to it. Um, but in order to get there, um, it took me like, yeah, seven plus years of experience as a designer to kind of like really figure out what I liked and what I didn't like. And um, it was kind of like a combination of looking at what I liked also as a person, as what the things that I mentioned, um, like the yoga and well, sometimes the beer or mindfulness and the nature. And I realized like these were all kind of like the ingredients that I love, I like to show in my illustrations as well. Um, and then the other part was um, preferences, personal preferences and talents. And it's mostly kind of like, <clears throat> what do I actually enjoy drawing? And what am I good at as well? And what kind of aesthetics do I prefer as well in the work of other artists? So when I kind of like overlapped these, I got a pretty good picture of like what I wanted my work to be about. And I just started exploring the topics that were not related to illustration with the style that I enjoyed from other artists and with what I uh, knew I was good at. So for example, I was always pretty good at drawing the human shape. And I also really liked that. So I was kind of like, well, why not go with that? And another example is I never really enjoyed drawing um, cities or architectural things with like lots of perspective in there and creating like these intric intricate um, little worlds with like a lot of like tiny little details in there. Even though I really love looking at these illustrations, I just 
I didn't have the patience to do it. So I was like, well, why should I? Um, if I can just draw what I like and um, make something out of that. And so this is kind of like how my style evolved. And then I also combined it with colors that I frequently use. And here we are. And um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, we're also making a video about this, a tutorial about how to find your style, how to develop your style and uh, with Vectornator. And I hope it's going to be a little guide that could help you find and develop your style as well. So make sure to check it out. Um, and then how to make a smooth corner? Yes, that's also a very good question. There are basically two ways to make a smooth corner. I um, mean, you're seeing here, um, I have here very straight corners, let's say, or like very, um, angled corners and uh, sometimes I just double tap this one if I need this to be smoother and then it opens up these two beziers that I can just you know kind of like shape around the way I want it to and I can just kind of like make a fake round corner for example like this or um, sometimes what I also do, um, just going back here, I actually add stroke in the same color and then it automatically gives me a rounded corner here. If I just want a little bit of like more smoother uh, corners instead of like really, really pointy ones. So these are two ways that I um, use or I apply to make kind of like rounder corners. Um, and I'm sure there are other ways. Um, this is just what I do. Um, and feel free to always explore your options as well and what you feel comfortable with, because in the end it should be working for you. It's not necessary that you do something that other people do. If it helps you as an inspiration, that's always great, of course. Um, but what I found to be best practice is to explore my ways of doing something. And if I find something that someone else is doing and it works for me, then I'm happy to apply it into my practice. And if not, um, then I'll just keep looking. So I'm making here little straps just to make this top a little bit more interesting. And you can see a little bit of the round corner up here already. Sometimes it's not quite catching on. So I'm going to make it a little bit smoother. There you go. Okay. And as promised, I'm going to switch this up. I'm going to change it, not the stroke, but the color to white. And I'll tug on visibility again to 100%. So now you can see it better. Okay, then after I have like the first couple of basic shapes ready, I usually move on to the hair. And then at the end, I just do the decorations that you can see here also included in the sketch. So now I'll go to the hair and I'll just put on top of my sketch layer, which is something I didn't mention actually previously. I already imported the sketch in the background um, and I'm just going to layer, put one layer after another for every like different item of the illustration um, on top of that. And this gives me the freedom to, uh, when I need to change something up, for example, I can just, um, for example, I can lock the clothes and then I can select only what I did for the skin. So everything that is kind of like in the same genre or something or in the same color, um, I usually have on one layer. That's just my way to work. So yeah, I always go like kind of like adding more layers on top of the sketch layer. And this is going to be here. 
and I will change the hair color. I will also use the pen tool. So I'm kind of like jumping back and forth. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing the hair in this lovely indigo blue. And um, actually I want the fill color to be blue and not the outline. So here we go. And then I just kind of like try to recreate these wavy lines that I brought in from the sketch. by adjusting the base areas here. And you can already see that because I placed the hair uh, layer be below, I'm just going to show you again, below the skin, um, I can actually see it as well now, how it behaves below the skin. And I'm just going to close this shape up really quickly because it's going to disappear once I toggle on visibility again for the skin. I'm just going to show you quickly so you know what I'm talking about. I double tap on the percentage sign here. I just type in 100%, press enter, and now you see what I mean. So I can already see here um, this, the shape of the face and the hair behind it. But I need to see what I'm doing, so I'm toggling back visibility of the skin layer back to 60. And well, I, the hair was pretty quick and easy, so just making some very minor, a little bit of perfectionist adjustments. And now I'm going to add on top of the skin layer that for to avoid confusion, I'm just going to call skin now. Um, I add another layer. I usually call this one lines or face or something. And I start to draw in some lines and shapes that will distinguish her facial features and also give a little bit of depth to this one plain surface that for now is her skin. I hope you'll see what I mean in a minute. So for that, I will also choose the pen tool and I will also use the same blue that I used for the hair to make it a little bit more, um, well, not monochromatic, but I just really like to use a reduced color palette that is also what makes my style a little bit distinguishable. And I like to work with basically just like three, four, five colors in one illustration. And if I want to smoothen this a little bit, because again, humans usually don't have like super straight angles, um, I can just adjust the base area a little bit accordingly. So I'm going to do the same for her nose, for example, to give her a little bit of a shadow beneath the nose. And I just, now you can see this really, really up close. I'm just moving the base area as close to the hair as I can. It doesn't really matter if it overlaps with the hair because it's the same color. So afterwards, you're not going to see this. And I'm also going to do this here. Um, underneath the mouth. Right. All right. Um, yeah, Emma, thanks for the tips. You have a great style. Thank you so much, Emma. This is so lovely. I'm so happy you joined today and I hope you're going to learn something and feel free to just ask a 
as many questions as you have. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, Moritz, second questions. Yes, great, Moritz. There you go. Uh, you ever try the auto trace feature? Uh, well, okay. Me and the auto trace. That's a little bit of a <laughs> uh, that's a bit of a story. So since I'm a graphic designer, I use the auto trace feature um, in Illustrator when I started uh, getting familiar with illustration tools and illustration programs from Adobe. And um, it just never really quite worked the way I wanted it to. And I had to make so many adjustments to the nodes that I just ended up drawing basically um, myself, or just it took me kind of like the same amount of time to redraw something that I would have ended up like correcting all the notes that I um, <clears throat> that I did um, so uh, to be honest I kind of like stopped using the auto trace feature from Illustrator and due to that modus operandi that I already kind of like brought with me I have to kind of admit that I never really tried the Vectornator auto trace which I actually fear is pretty great so if you have any experience with that um, well let me know if you like it and I'll be happy to try it okay so now I also want to draw some lips in here and that I'm just going to add a line here or a stroke which is well, it's a bit big for my taste so Maybe just 1.5 point stroke width. Mm, that's a little bit big, so let's just make it one and see how that goes. Again, and since uh, her hair is also blue, I'm kind of in luck because now I can just kind of like move this knot over and now you can already see that she's smiling. And I want her to have actually kind of like Um, a full lip or something kind of like makeup so I'm just going to draw a quick shape over that and since this is a little bit of a long process especially because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist I actually I kind of see where this is going. Um, I will speed this up in a minute. I'm just going to show you very quickly that I basically do all this as well for areas, let's say like here in the elbow, just to distinguish it a little bit from the rest of the, um, let's say darker red colored shape. And then I can do this also a tiny bit maybe over here to give it some idea of a finger and over here in the foot let's say here something like this okay so I hope you get the idea because I actually prepared a little cheat that I'm just going to move in here in my drawing. Just going to put this on top of um, my hair layer because I already prepared the skin and the lines for you. So. I can speed up this step a little bit. So here you can see I, um, for example, here I have a few lines that help distinguish, for example, the face from the arm because this is all the same color. I drew her entire face already. And yeah, just added a bunch of little details here in the arm and here in the foot and you can see that 
now I have to adjust the cloth a little bit. So I unlock this layer, which is something I frequently do because if not, I start drawing on different layers and I don't want that. And I just move this into place and cover up the skin completely. Here we go. And I can also do that with this top. And here, perfect because now we can move on to something that I also like to include a lot in my illustrations, which are tiny little tattoos that I just like to randomly place all over uh, the person's body. So for that, we will just create a new layer. I will call it tattoos. And again, I will lock the other layers just for safety. And then for that, I can either use the pencil tool or the pen tool, depending. It often depends a little bit on my mood. And yeah, so today to switch it up a little bit, let's use the pencil tool. I usually go up to around 92 or 96%. I pick a stroke color and let's say we put one point thickness for the stroke just to see that's actually not so bad it's just that the fill is still on which is something I don't want yeah that's that's not it's pretty good I'll redraw it again though because it still has too much wiggly um, it's still a little bit too wiggly for me this line so okay I accidentally removed it again so. So here's what I usually do. I just kind of like freehand, freestyle some leaves. Then I can make this a little bit more neat. Something like that. And then this also turned out a little bit wiggly. And yeah, I can just basically draw strokes almost as if I were drawing freehand, which I really like, and it's really fast. So this is kind of like my, it's, I know it's not auto trace, but this is kind of like my auto trace replacement. Let's add another leaf here. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then maybe add one, just one more line here. And again, I can just move the base ears and the nodes in the placement that I want. Perfect. So, and here's why I um, lock most of my uh, layers, because now I can just select these two because I have everything else locked. And I can just change the stroke width. Just like that, because I want it a little bit more thick. So now I'm just going to add a couple of more of these cute little tattoos. Maybe like that. I just like, you know, in the end, I kind of like what I really want is just to have all these tattoos that I usually draw on all my characters. So I guess it's just kind of like wishful thinking when I do this. Ooh, this one is not quite in place. Okay. Yeah. And I think this note I will actually not need. So I'm just going to delete it. And same goes for this one. 
so it gives a little bit more of a smooth appearance okay hope you don't mind my perfectionism too much I'm trying to not get hold too much not get held up too much by the details but really show you my process which sometimes just takes a minute or two to draw something or to get it just the way that I want it to be. Here's another little trick um, that I sometimes do when, so here, for example, this node, you might see that the base ears are kind of like somewhere or maybe not even existent. So I just double tap and then they appear and they already give like a pretty nice smooth curve. So sometimes I just work with that and I could just basically delete this one and just move the other base ear into the place that I want and then maybe work a little bit with this to give it kind of like this flowy curve that I aspire to have. So here's another line and this one actually has automatically only two nodes that I just have to kind of like put into the right place. Okay, and now another cool feature of just having basically every other layer um, locked is I can select, for example, this couple of leaves. I can just go to the select tool and then to copy and I can just copy it. Unselect copy so it doesn't create another copy of this. Like maybe rotate it a little bit. Select it again and just yeah, place it here and save some time. And I can do the same <coughs> here with this as well. Whoops, see, now I didn't toggle off copy. And that's what happens. And I can just place it around here. All right, more questions. Uh, Mind Wizard asks, really cool video. How long have you been an illustrator and is it difficult to get to your level? Um, so I've been a self-employed illustrator for two years now. And I've been always kind of like drawing on the side when I was working as a graphic designer, which is why I started out. That was around eight, almost 10 years ago. Um, and I actually always wanted to be an illustrator, but um, well, I just ended up studying graphic design instead for reasons of life. And um, yeah, about two years ago, I just kind of like took my chance and started working as a full time illustrator. And I luckily it went really well. Um, yeah, I'm very happy. I'm, I have clients, amazing clients, by the way, like Vector Native. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, is it difficult to get to your level? Well, I think everybody can absolutely get to any level they want. And uh, it's really a matter of determination. There, I always hear like a lot of like, oh i i couldn't i could never be an illustrator because you know i'm not talented or something like that it's just kind of like well i i know illustrators who had who used to have like zero talent or something and their teachers told them like well you're not good at drawing blah 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 whatever and i just really wanted to become an illustrator so um they just really applied themselves to it and they worked very hard on it and now they're amazing so um, I think everything is absolutely possible if you really want it and don't get discouraged by somebody telling you that you cannot draw or something like that because I don't know I just don't think that people should ever do that everybody should be free to explore what they want to become so um, I think I've had the, the fortune that or kind of like the, the um, yeah, the good luck that I was actually pretty good at drawing when I went to school. So my teachers encouraged me to 
draw more. Um, and I think this really helped because, yeah, again, I hear the stories of people who kind of like aspire to maybe become an artist or an illustrator or something creative. And then they just got kind of like nasty feedback or something like that. And then they abandoned that, which I think is super sad. Um, so, yeah, in my case, I was very lucky because I got the support. Um, and um, was so probably this also helped with the hard part because I really enjoyed what I was doing and I, I had quite a bit of talent. So I got quite good when I was kind of like applying myself to it quite quickly. Um, so I think it, it kind of like really depends from person to person. Um, it was quite a long time though to get to this because I mean, it took me like 10 years of being a professional graphic designer and sometimes doing illustration gigs on the side um, plus, well, 20 years of um, life basically. So I'm in my thirties now and I know that there is still a long way to go. I mean, I know that I can still get better from here. So um, yeah, I think this really depends from person to person and from also how much time you really have to put into this. And if you don't have that much time, that's also fine. The important thing is that you just keep on working on what you love and what you want to, where you want to get at. And Eric asked, what was the most difficult thing about starting your design business? Ooh, wow. Um, hmm, that, um, huh, so many things. <laughs> um, I think uh, the one thing that always comes to mind um, is um, being self-employed um, is awesome but it can be so challenging so often because you really have to confront yourself. Um, you have to kind of like be able to see through your own bullshit. Um, whoops, I said I wasn't going to swear, but well. Um, <clears throat> you, um, yeah, I think the difficult part was mostly kind of like seeing where I was holding myself back and kind of like adjusting that as quickly as I could because my livelihood depended on it. So um, I think we all have sometimes these kind of like things that we kind of like, um, we have like our belief system or something like that that might hold us back a little bit. And um, seeing that and knowing what was holding me back, it can even be kind of like a, a trauma or a difficult um, event from the past or maybe a fear, you know, like maybe a fear of outreach, reaching out to clients and telling them that you're making awesome illustrations and that they should work with you. I see a lot of people who are afraid of that, for example. Um, that's that's hard. I mean, it's 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 hard if you're there, if you're if you're experiencing that, but it's also hard to kind of like just push through and go on with it because you have to do it um, in order to get clients, in order to make uh, money with your art. I mean, of course, you can always choose to have a side job or something for, for, um, like that. But I believe that it is um, our responsibility that if we have the gift of creating that, we should also share that and that we should be able to make money from it and not be starving, hopefully. So um, I think this was actually the, the hardest thing and it keeps being the hardest thing for me in my business to just um, face my fears or facing the things that are holding me back or doing the things that I really don't want to do and just do them for the sake of my art and my business. Great. So yeah, now we have a couple of um, these tattoos here. I'm just going to add this one as well down here. Oh, yep. This sometimes also happens. If I can't get a proper grasp, here we go. And I'll add this one and I will actually make it a little bit smaller. Remember that if you're, when you're scaling something, hold down one finger to scale it um, proportionally. And if you want to really distort it, then you don't hold down the finger, which is what I don't want. So I want to scale this proportionally, but I want to, to be a little bit smaller. And maybe I just want actually this little leaf down here. Great. Okay. Now we will move on to the little leafy parts uh, that are surrounding this lovely yoga lady. 
And for that, I will place a new layer. I usually call those plants or leaves. I most often just work with the same names for my layers, as you can see. So it's kind of like an automized process already. Um, and I will again lock the tattoo layer so I will not accidentally mess that one up. And I will pick again the pencil tool. And well, the stroke is already on white, that's perfect. So I'll just start drawing these leaves really, really loosely, really just here is where I enjoy this free flow of the pencil tool the most because I really want these lines to be wiggly and not too perfect. All I want is for them to meet at some point. And then I can add this um, stem, let's say, using the pen tool, just like that. And of course, my little bit of perfectionism tells me that these lines should meet seamlessly. All right, so you can see this is a little bit different from the, from the sketch, but I don't really mind. Um, and then I just keep drawing and adding more lines using the pencil tool, which actually does already really what I want it to do. And it makes these super cool wiggly leaves where I don't really have to add much to them. Yeah, and, ooh, yeah. This, this works too, perfect. Let's put that a bit more into place and maybe make the stem a little bit more curvy. And here I'm just going to freestyle it actually a little bit because I don't want the stem to actually meet here. And I want this one to be a little bit smaller as well, just like that. Okay, now let's see, let's add another one maybe here. And this one I also want a little bit smaller, but other than that, I really like it. And I want this to be filled. So at some point I start deciding um, which one of these decoration elements that I want to have a fill and which ones that I want to have uh, just as an outline, which is also something that is kind of like probably particular to my style. I like to work with just outline and sometimes also with filled areas. Let's also make this a fill and this. And here I can actually not do it because I didn't connect the knots. So let's just quickly do that. It's not very hard if you ever find yourself with something like that. What I do is just I move the last uh, knot here, select it, and let me see if I can do this. This might just be an illustrated default. Okay, yeah, so what I'm trying to do, in case you cannot see this, which I'm just becoming aware of, because the contrast is very low, I'm just going to do them in a different color. It's probably easiest. I apologize for the, uh, for the technical problems. So let's see if they're a little bit more visible. No. Nope. Then let's just do them in pink for now. 
Okay. So I can always change them back, you know, to a different color. I wanted them to be white, but yeah, um, the technique, um, the technology didn't quite work for that. So not a problem, you can always switch up the color. So I hope now you can see a little bit better what I was trying to explain. So some of these lines, I just want to, um, or one of these, some of these leaves, I just want to be uh, with a fill and some of them I want to be just an outline. And I usually just decide that kind of like on the go, um, yeah, which ones I feel that in the composition make the most sense. Um, to be filled or not and it usually has to do a lot of with intuition and also a lot of with kind of like harmony and balance and you might see that i'm a big fan of symmetry so this uh, artwork is actually not that symmetrical um but yeah sometimes i just work with a lot of symmetry and then i try to unbalance it a little bit by kind of like switching up uh fill and stroke in these botanical shapes Okay, I have another comment. Eric says, thank you. You are very welcome, Eric. Thank you for your question. Um, how do you find clients as a freelance artist? Um, so that's a healthy mix of mm, recommendations. Then, you know, in your surroundings, hopefully you always find some people who might want or need services in illustration what uh, is something that has worked quite well for me because I already get to uh, connect with the people is I just do what I enjoy doing and I talk about being an illustrator well as much as I can as, as much as it makes sense basically um, and then sometimes people just kind of like hit me up and like oh hey you're an illustrator actually um can we talk? I, I have a question or I need something, etc., etc. And then very often there can be super interesting and fruitful um, collaborations. Um, so, for example, I once took a brewing class because um, I mentioned before I'm a huge beer nerd. Um, so I was learning how to brew beer. And uh, the woman who was giving the class, she was like, hey, so you're an illustrator. That's pretty cool. You know, I need... Um, I always do this kind of like a little packages with seeds and then some cards with like explanations about the plant. So it's always about one plant, etc. etc. So it's kind of like a little package with a lot of things about one plant. So there is a card and there is like some text and some recipes and some instructions and yeah, also some seeds. Um, so she told me about that project and I was like, yeah, hey, that sounds great. So well, let's talk when you when you do the next one. And she did. And then I illustrated um, the next card for this lovely package. And this is how one of my collaborations happened. Um, then there is also a lot of happening through Instagram. And um, then I also do client outreach uh, because, yeah, I cannot always wait around until people find me. I have to become active and show them that I can do something amazing for them. And um, yeah, that often works out too. I know this is a little bit uncomfortable sometimes to get out of your comfort zone, um, but why not? I mean, you're offering something great. You're offering a great service to someone. So why not tell them about it? So it's kind of like a mix of all these three. And um, yeah, sometimes one works a little bit better. Sometimes the other one works a little bit better. The thing is to kind of like keep it in balance to always have a workflow coming in and client flow coming in. <coughs> so, sorry. <coughs> Mouth gets a little dry when you talk a lot. Okay, so now what I was trying is to actually reconnect this. And to be honest, I gave up a little bit just so I will not make this too long for you very happy already about everyone everybody who's been tagging along so i'll just kind of like improvise this and as i told you before i'm just going to fill this in as well and again since i have all my other layers locked i can just quickly select this go again to the copy tab 
drag, hold one finger down. Ooh. And, oh yeah, I held one finger down so it was moving on the same line horizontally. Um, and then I go here to this tab, I just mirror it. Always important to turn off copy because this has happened countless times to me that I copied accidentally twice or three times the same thing. And I'm just going to place it somewhere around here, maybe. Yeah, that's a little bit too far over here, actually. I want it a little bit closer here. Yeah, that's good. So, since unfortunately this is also pink, you cannot see this little leaf down here, but I'm just going to make this one white and I can see it. And yeah, once I feel kind of like, okay, this is, yeah, this is kind of like what I want. Let's maybe add some tiny little details like moon and something else. Um, I just add a, usually a decoration layer. I'm just, um, I can't really come up with a better name for this because this is kind of like just one layer where I just kind of like put everything else that I haven't put in yet. So for this moon, as I mentioned before, one of the tools that I use as well are just the um, shape tools here. Uh, here I just picked a circle and I will just redraw this moon super quickly using two circles and I'll make not that big the top one okay yeah here we go a little bit smaller now here I'm using a little bit of just experience judgment we'll see how this goes I select both of these circles and I go here to, to the boolean functions and I will pick the second one, the second from the left, which is subtract. And now you can see that it created, you cannot see actually, because this is white. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Okay, I'll just make this one blue. Um, I'll just repeat this very quickly in case you missed this. So circle, then I take the copy, tool just copy the circle make the top one a little bit smaller and yep now my pencil is giving me a bit of grief okay i'll just do it like that i make the top one a little bit smaller i place it centered or i can just select these two and actually align them which is here in alignment i hope you can see this and then i jump over to path and i pick the second boolean function from the left i click on that and i have a cute little moon here and now i can just scale it in the size that i want all right I will add a couple of more decorative elements. I'm just going to add some circles to the left and right. I will make the stroke a little bit thicker so it can actually be seen. Place it here. And then again, I tap the copy button and I hold one finger down to just slide it to the other side on the horizontal line, as you can see. So it moves like on the exact horizontal axis. And I just place it over here. And I'll make the moon a little bit smaller. It's a bit too big for my taste. Hey, okay. And see, now I didn't turn off copy. So that's what happens. Okay. Good. Okay, where did it go? Great. Um, 
and then I would like to add some cute little waves to the left and right. So I use again the circle tool, just draw a circle. And I just want this to be an outline. I'll make it a bit smaller. <laughs> there is a question if I'm going to start my own beer brand. Well, let me say that um, I have already brewed a beer last year for Christmas as a Christmas present for uh, my design studio that I co-own with my friend and business partner. And it was, yeah, it was our, our Christmas present that it was like a specially brewed um, beer from us to them with our own designed label and everything. And um, for now, I think this is this suffices. This is suffice because I already channel pretty much all of my energy into my one passion that is drawing and my design business. So um, I think right now working in the brewing industry, especially since there are already so many great people who make amazing beer, what's kind of the point to just make uh, more beers if there are really, really great ones out there. Also, I think I'm a little bit better at drinking beer than making beer. Um, so I'll just stick to the things that I know. And there's another question. Uh, what's your favorite creative project you ever worked on? Hmm. 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 Um, wow. Um, that's, that's kind of a mood thing, I think. So it's a couple of, um, a couple of projects come to mind. One of them is, um, is definitely a mural project that I did for a, um, she's very sweet. She was a follower on Instagram for quite a while. We had uh, a little bit of contact once in there. So a couple of DMs that we sent back and forth. And then she reached out to me. She was kind of like, hey, don't you want to paint a mural at my house? I love your art, blah, blah, blah. Like just basically do what you want to do. Um, and um, well, she picked one of my designs that she liked and we just adjusted it a little bit so it would fit into her space. And um, yeah, so it was like a, a mural that I did for a client um, that I could basically do um, whatever I wanted. So it was like really my style because very often when you work for clients, you work a little bit in their uh, corporate identity or something like that. So you always have to make some adjustments, which are also can be really interesting creative challenges. Um, but this one was really nice because I was really free to do what I'm already doing and then also on a big scale on a mural, which I just love doing, even though my back and my knees and everything hurt afterwards, but it's just, yeah, it's always great to do a mural. Um, and another project that I really, really enjoyed is uh, actually my biggest client. Uh, it's a Swiss bank and I it's really cool to work with them because um, they're usually very big projects. There are a lot of illustrations that I have to do for them. And it's just really interesting to kind of like push the boundaries of, um, you know, what I would be doing maybe on a small scale for myself to do for a big client, for a big international client. Um, and you kind of like really have to bring all the illustrations together in one style. And this is a really, really interesting challenge to work on. And then also see that, you know, it goes out in all the world and for everybody to see. Uh, yeah, that's also great. And then maybe somewhere in between these two is my work that I'm doing when it's kind of like um, collaborative style with brands, when it's when they want to collaborate with me because they've seen my work and they like it. And well, we could call it like influencer work or something like that. Uh, yeah, um, where I can record, for example, tutorials like I do with Vectornator, which is always really great because they give me a lot of creative freedom. And I can just basically sit here and show you what I'm doing usually. And um, yeah, it's just really fun to share this and to see that people appreciate it. And yeah, all the, all the creative freedom that I get um, by bringing my own inputs and all this. This is, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, Sa Sarap. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I'm very sorry if I didn't. 
uh, asked, Boolean functions are very confusing for me. Yes, same here. Okay, so look, I only looked so confident because I always use the same one. Um, <laughs> but usually what happens is I just kind of like press them all and then I see which one actually does the thing that I want it to do. And uh, yeah, with the subtracting, I got a little bit better. And then the adding, I'm just going to show you very quickly the um, Boolean um, tab again. The adding is the first one on the left. So I think this is kind of like self-explanatory. Um, yeah, and this is just kind of like bringing two shapes together and then just, you know, just make it one shape, which can be super, super beneficial. Um, yeah, this one I think is the one that is kind of like most straightforward. Then the subtracting one, that's the one next to it, to, to the right, um, is well a little bit more confusing, but still I think kind of possible to handle. And then eventually I will maybe use the one in the middle or the one that comes right after the subtract one. If I have kind of like two shapes and I actually just want the one in the middle to um, to use. So if I bring two circles together and they overlap like in a cute Venn diagram, which is uh, something that I really like, like statistics and stuff, um, then I can, I can use that. So I just bring together two shapes and I just want the, yeah, the two circles and I just want the piece in the middle. Um, then maybe I use that one, but well, don't feel bad if you're just kind of like toggling them <laughs> until you get the one that you want. This is basically the process that I also do it. So yeah, it just looks a little bit more confident here because uh, I always use the same function. Okay, so um, I'm going to create here a couple of little waves just to kind of like finish off this illustration. And I started with a circle that I outlined. And what I'm going to do is I will pick the scissors tool here on my left toolbar. I will pick the top button uh, node, sorry, and I will delete it. And now I have just a half circle. And this half circle with the copy function that I just toggled on on the left, I will just tap and also hold one finger down to keep it on the horizontal axis. And maybe another one, like here. And then I just copy or select all of this again, copy it again, and then just place it, let's say roughly underneath this, but this is, I'm just really eyeballing this. Um, now I feel it's a little bit too big, so I'm just going to make it smaller again. I hold one finger down to scale this proportionally, and I will bring this element to my left side as well. I will mirror this and let's just select all of these elements together and not copy them, but just bring them somewhat into the middle of my composition, which I estimate is around here. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my illustration. Um, what I'm going to do now is I will toggle off visibility from the sketch. So I will have a clean background. And very, very last but not least, I always include my signature and then just a little bit of text on the left where I include my um, my link to my website in case somebody likes my work and it's posted out of context so maybe not on my instagram or something like that they still have a chance to find me and i always include a copyright thing because well it's a little bit sad but sometimes you have to make sure that your work isn't getting stolen and so yeah i just just a little reminder for people that they are not allowed to use this without my permission and then, of course, there is always my signature, as you can see in the bottom, because branding is important. And please make sure that you include your signature or just something that refers to your work, because you never know, somebody might repost your work um, on Pinterest or something, and it gets kind of like disconnected from your original account or something like that, which, you know, this is fine. 
um, but you will always want to make sure that if somebody likes this, they can always find you. So include your contact information and your signature in everything. All right. Yeah. So I will also make the background a little bit darker. So maybe you can hopefully see it a little bit clearer what I've been doing. <laughs> a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, this didn't change too much. Let me see. Well, it's not that it looks very pretty, but we can do actually this. Why not? Let's just make this a dark background for now. Because I really want you to see what I did really properly. And I will change her hair. To a different color. And then again, I was going on for so much about your brand. So of course, we will also change this into a color that you can see a little bit better. Just to make sure that everybody sees your amazing work. All right, and now I could actually also, now that we're doing this, Change up the leaves again. To the color that I originally wanted them. No, that might be a little bit too much. Let's not do that. All right. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, you can just easily also switch around uh, the background color or something like that in case you just want to try out different colors. Always feel free to to do that, play around, have fun. And um, yeah, sometimes it works better with a different background color. Sometimes it works better um, with like a more uh, bright color. Feel free to experiment. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned a lot. Now this is the very last chance that you have to ask me some questions. I'm gonna hang around a little bit longer um, in case there are like some last minute questions. And if not, I thank you very much for joining us. Uh, really hope you enjoyed this. And um, if you did, please make sure that you follow Vectornator on YouTube and well, of course, everything else, everywhere else as well, like Instagram. So you will, you will not miss cool tutorials uh, also with me. And if you know my work, please also look me up on Instagram follow me, say hello if you feel like it, ask me more questions if you want to, I would love to um, answer them for you. And uh, my Instagram handle is sandra.staub. So yeah, looking forward to hearing from you and thank you so, so much for joining today. Bye-bye.